Today, uh, we start a new chapter, uh, sampling distribution. Uh, these are the topics we are going to discuss in this chapter. And uh, first, let's recall a uh, concept from uh, uh, chapter one. Uh, we have two types of data. First one is uh, quantitative, and second one is categorical. Quantitative data is something that can be counted or measured and can then can be averaged across individuals in the population. For example, your height, your age, your IQ, okay, any numbers that can do mathematical calculations. Uh, you do summation, you do division, you do uh, addition or subtraction. Categorical data uh, uh, are something that uh, falls into one of several categories. Uh, uh, what can be counted is the proportion of the uh, individual in each category. Uh, for example, your gender, uh, male or female, your hair color, and your blood type A, B, uh, O. So how do we figure out uh, uh, the types of uh, data? You ask yourself, what are the N individuals or N unit in the sample uh, of a size N? And what is being recorded about this A individuals unit? Is that a number? Uh, if it is a number, that means it can, it can be applied uh, with the mathematical operations, it's quantitative. Or it is a statement, it's categorical. This class is called the statistics. And we know a parameter refers to something to the population. And a statistic is something that refers to the sample. So actually, this is uh, the real statistics uh, starting from this chapter. Uh, the techniques of uh, inferential statistics allows us to draw inferences or conclusions about population in the sample. Remember when we, no matter what kind of experiment you do or service you do, you want your conclusion to be valid or to be applied to a large population. But uh, we cannot do the experiment to the population, you learn. We can only do the experiment or the survey to a sample. So you estimate uh, the parameter from your statistic of the sample. Your estimate of the population is only as good as your sampling design. So work hard to eliminate bias. And we discussed the techniques in the previous chapters, how to randomize your sample or all these techniques. So we need, if you need to design experiment, we need to use all these uh, techniques. Uh, try to eliminate bias. Your sample is only an estimate uh, for example, if I want to know the USM student GPA, uh, I don't want to uh, calculate from the whole student body. I can only work to a, uh, with a sample. Then, uh, your sample is only an estimate. And if you randomly sample again, you would probably get a somewhat different result. Uh, for example, uh, suppose our class is a random. Uh, suppose it is a random. Uh, it's, uh, we have a 35 student. Then we can calculate the mean GPA uh, of this sample. It's called statistic. Uh, suppose the mean GPA of the, our class is 3.5. Then if I go to another class uh, randomly, uh, not uh, assuming again, the other class is also a random uh, sample of the USM population, then the GPA of that class may be 3.2, maybe 3.3. But um, uh, theoretically, it, there's no way for these two samples to have the same average GPA if we assume GPA is a continuous distribution. Uh, again, recall the, uh, the Facebook uh, uh, homework example. Uh, but which one is better? Because both samples are estimation uh, of the population. So which one is better? Uh, our class is 35. The other class may be, for example, 100. The other class may be 5. 
So which sample give us a better estimation of the population of the USM student GPA? Okay, the conclusion is the bigger the sample, the better. Uh, if the class size is 100, then that estimate estimation is better than our 35. It's much better than the other class of size 5. Uh, so this is only the sample, this is the population, and we want to get uh, the to estimate the parameter of the population from the statistic in this sample. So this is called statistical inference. As we said, right, the mean GPA of our class will be different than the mean GPA of the other class. So each time we take a random sample from our population, we are likely to get a different set of individuals and a different statistic. This is called a sampling vari a variability. Right? Our class GPA is 3.5, other one is 3.2, the other one maybe equals 3.3. So all these are sampling variability. So we use which one to estimate the population GPA? Uh, 3.5 or 3.2 or 3.3? Now, the good news is that if we take a lot of random samples of the same size from a given population, the variation from sample to sample, eh, 3.5, 3.2, 3.3, this forms a sampling distribution. The sampling distribution field will follow a predictable pattern. All of the statistical inference is based on this knowledge. So the key here is, uh, in our example, the mean of all the samples of the same size will form a sampling distribution. And we can base, uh, make some inference of the population based on this uh, sampling distribution. The variability of statistic is described by the spread of the sampling distribution because this is a distribution. We know it has a spread. Um, um, spread gives us the variability. If the spread is large, then that means uh, uh, it's more variable. Right? If the spread is small, then this is more um, stable. Uh, the variability is small. This spread depends on the sampling design and the sampling size. Uh, you can guess if your sample size is small, for example, uh, five, then the variability will be large. Okay, this class GPA equals uh, equals maybe all five are A students, so 4.0. The other class of five maybe is not that good, could maybe equals three. Or the other one maybe equals uh, equals two. So if the sampling size is small, we can see, we can guess um, the sampling will have um, a uh, larger spread. Uh, for larger sample size, means the n, for larger n, uh, the variability will be small. Uh, that is easy to guess. Statistics from large samples are almost always close estimate of the true population parameter. Uh, however, this is only applied to random samples. Uh, again, random samples. Uh, uh, again, for example, uh, if you choose a class of uh, 150, uh, that GPA is very good, it's very close estimate of the UFM uh, GPA, uh, student GPA. Uh, but uh, that sample must be random. Uh, you cannot take, for, uh, for example, okay, the, um, uh, uh, not a random sample. Uh, you choose the best uh, 150 student, then that definitely is not a good estimate of the um, population. All right, now we use uh, some graphs to describe the sampling variability. And uh, suppose the population, which is very large, and the mean of the population equals 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.60. And uh, in the first experiment, we randomly choose 100 uh, simple random samples of n, size n, which equals 100. And uh, okay, suppose this is, assume this one is one sample of size 100. 
and we calculate the mean of this sample, we use a p hat, and we get the result equals 0 0.64. Then we choose another random sample of the same size of 100, and we calculate the mean of that sample, okay, that p, p hat equals 0 0.55. And we do this for the third one, okay, equals 0 0.61. And we can do a lot, eh? a lot. Then we draw this distribution, six, uh, six, uh, uh, 0 0.64 is somewhere here, 0 0.55 okay, somewhere here, uh, 61 somewhere here. Okay, that gives us a, a distribution. This is called a sampling distribution. Uh, we can see we have a variation here sampling variability. Now, if we change our plan, and we still uh, from the same population of p equals 0 0.6, but we choose a, a random uh, sample size much larger, and this size equals 2,500 instead of only 100. So this equals 2,500 people. And we calculate the mean of this sample uh, we get the p hat and this equals 0 0.609. Then we choose another simple random sample of the same size, 2500, and that p equals 0 0.625. And the third one was 0 0.579. And again, we have a lot. Uh, we need to do a lot because we want to form a distribution. And we draw this. Uh, distribution, this is called also a sampling distribution, but uh, this one will be much narrower than this one. So the reason is because this sampling size n is much larger than this, so the variability of here will be much, much smaller than this one. But they have the same center. Uh, the mean of the sampling distribution is 0 0.6, and this mean of the sampling distribution is also equal to 0 0.6. Uh, that is not um, a, a lock. Uh, actually, in the later slide, we are going to discuss this is, must be like this. This must be like this. Uh, the only difference for these two sampling distributions is because A is small here, A is large here, so this one is, um, is wider, this one is uh, much narrower. So this one has less variability, this one has uh, uh, more variability. Uh, we said your estimate is uh, as good as your design, uh, sampling design. Eh? So if we use a larger sampling size, for example, because we do not want to do all, we just use one. For example, we said this one, eh? or the first one. So we said we do the first one. Now, once you choose this sample size of 2500, you get a result of this. If you choose a sample of size 100, you get 0 0.64. We are going to use this one, or we are going to use this one to approximate the population mean, which is 0 0.6. So from here, we can see this one is a better estimate uh, than this one. The reason is because this one has a larger sampling size. In this chapter, we only discuss uh, the mean of the sample. Okay? So uh, we are discussing the sampling distribution of the sample mean. We do not discuss any other uh, statistics. We only discuss this, uh, the sample mean. Okay? We take many random samples of a given size n from a population with the mean, mu, and the standard deviation uh, sigma. So this mean, mu, is a parameter of this population. And the standard deviation sigma here also refers to a population, so it is a parameter. And some sample means we are above the population, um, mean mu, and some will be below, making up a sampling distribution. 
we know this from the previous uh, examples. So here, uh, the sample size equals, uh, equals 10, then the mean of this sample equals 26.42, uh, uh, the other one equals 24.28, the other one equals 25.22, and the population mean equals 25. So the population mean is here, and some means of the sample will be larger, some um, means of the sample will be smaller and give us a, a sampling distribution. So this is called the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Sample mean, we use this x bar to represent. So x bar to represent. Okay, so now we are going to do how to form the sampling distribution. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, we are going to do a lot of uh, samples uh, to form a sampling distribution. And the more samples, the better. The sampling distribution of a statistic is the distribution of all possible values taken by the statistic when all possible samples of the fixed size n are taken from the population. Uh, as our previous, in our uh, previous example, the USM has a population and we have 15,000 students. And we want to approximate the GPA of this population and we use a sample size of 20n. How to form the sampling distribution? The sampling distribution is uh, of all the possible values uh, of the sampling mean, uh, because we are care about the sample, uh, the mean of the uh, the mean GPA, of a possible samples of the fixed size, which we use twenty. So how many all? So now the question is how many are these possible samples can we have? Uh, so we have a population of fifteen thousand students. And we want to pick a sample of size 20, then how many randomly, then how many different samples can we get? Right? We use the combination uh, concept we discussed before. So from the 15,000 students, we pick only 20. Right? That will be equals 15,000 factorial, then divided by 20 factorial, then the difference 14980 factorial. On uh, this one, you need to cancel a lot here. Then on the top, we are going to have 14981 times 14982, then times all the way up to 15000, then divided by this. Okay, that number is approximately equals 1.35 times 10 to the power of 65. So that will be 135 followed, followed by 65, 63 uh, zeros. Uh, 63 zeros. So you can see, these all possible samples are very large. So definitely we cannot uh, do the experiment to all these possible sample size. So how to form the sampling distribution if we cannot do to the all samples? Mm -hmm. So that means the sampling, this sampling distribution is only a uh, uh, theory. So we do not actually do this uh, form the sampling distribution by this way. Once we have the sampling distribution of the sample mean, uh, we can study the center for any population with mean, mu, and the standard deviation sigma. Keep in mind again, this mean and the sigma are for the population. And the mean of the sampling distribution, and this is x bar, this is referred to the sample. And we have x bar 1 right, to the sample 1, x bar 1, x bar 2, x bar 3, all the way. So we have a lot of samples. The mean of this sampling distribution of x bar is equal to the population mean. We represent this in math as the mean of the means equals the population mean. 
Obviously, the mean of the sampling means equals uh, the population mean. Right? X bar means the mean of the sample. Right? And this mu means uh, the mean of the sampling distribution. The mean of the means equals uh, the mean of the means of the sample equals the population mean. There is no tendency for sample means to fall systematically above or below the mu. Right? Uh, we cannot, we don't want to prove this, so that looks like a fact. Right? Uh, even if the distribution of the raw data is skewed, mm -hmm. thus the mean of the sampling distribution is an unbiased estimate of the population mean. So we can use the mean of the sampling distribution as an unbiased a very good estimate of the population. It will be correct on average in many samples. So what does that mean? That means I want to know, for example, I want to know the USM student mean GPA. I can take several samples of a size 20. The first one give me 3.2, the next one is give me uh, for example, the first size, uh, the first sample gives us 3.2, the next one gives me 3.3, the next one gives us 3.5, and the next one maybe gives us 2.8, and a lot uh, form of sampling distribution. Then the mean of all these means here, uh, this is the mean of the first sample, this is the mean of the second sample, this is the mean of the third sample, uh, all this. The mean of all these means will be a very good uh, unbiased estimate of the population mean, means the mean USM GPA. Uh, here, we use this example. Assume student scores in all USM classes satisfy a distribution, uh, normal or not. Uh, the matter is, on, actually is not normal, uh, but normal or not, we don't care. With a mean of 80, so this is the population mean, and the standard deviation of, so this is the sigma, this is the mean of the population. Uh, each student, we assume, uh, takes uh, four classes, uh, that is the four time. We just make assumptions. Suppose everybody take four classes. So n here equals, uh, equals four. All the courses, um, form the population and each student takes only four of them and this gives us a, a sample, uh, a random sample, we assume. Then the mean of the mean score for all students, uh, for example you take uh, four courses, your mean is uh, your mean GPA equals 3.2 uh, for this semester. The other one is 3.3, the other one is 3.5, the other one is 2.8. So those are the GPA of these four courses, or the term GPA. Then, this term GPA of each student forms a sampling distribution. What is the mean of this mean scores of all students? Uh, this is the question. What is the mean of this mean scores of all students? We don't use, oh sorry, we don't use a three point this because we use uh, the 80. So what is this? Okay, now the formula is uh, the mean of the sample means equals the population mean. So this one will approximately equals 80. Okay? So you have four courses and your mean of your four courses may be, for example, equals 90. Uh, the other one maybe equals uh, 95, and the other student maybe equals um, uh, 72. Uh, the other one maybe equals uh, on average equals 60 or something. So anyway, all this um, mean of this means will be equals to 80. Uh, the mean of the sampling means equals the population mean. So this is uh, keep this in mind, in your mind. We are going to use this a lot of times. Next one, we are going to discuss uh, the variation of the sampling distribution. For any population with mean, mu and the standard deviation here, standard deviation sigma, again, these two numbers refer to the population. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean 
is uh, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution mean is equal to the population standard deviation divided by square root of the sample size. Uh, and we know the mean of the sample means equals the population mean. So that's the first one. The second one is uh, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Uh, the, sam the standard deviation of the sample means equals the population mean divided by the square root of the sample size. And this one will be equal to the population mean. This one will be reduced by a factor of square root of n. Uh, that means for the population, the standard deviation x sigma will be larger than the variation of the sampling distribution. The standard deviation of a sampling distribution measures how much the sample statistic varies from sample to sample. The meaning is the averages of samples are less variable than individual observations. Okay? Again, okay, use this example. Assume student scores in all UFM classes is uh, uh, the mean equals 80, and the standard deviation equals uh, uh, 10, so that is the population standard deviation. Again, okay, uh, assume everybody takes uh, four courses, A equals four. Uh, from the last slide, we know, uh, for example, uh, one student can get uh, um, 95, the other one can get 92, then 72, or 68, or something. Right? So that is the mean score of that student of the four courses. This is the mean of the second student uh, of the four courses, and so on. So the mean of all these means, we already know, equals 80. Now, we know each student have different scores. So the, there's a variation. So what is the standard deviation of this uh, mean of the samples. So the standard deviation, the standard deviation of the mean of the samples. Uh, the mean is uh, on the four. We assume the size equals four. So that will be equal to the population standard deviation, which equals 10 here, then divided by the square root of uh, the sample size, which assume we assume each body uh, takes four courses, so that will be four. Right? So square root of four equals two, then 10 over four um, equals two, so equals five. Uh, so the standard deviation of the sampling means will be equals five. So that one is less than the population standard deviation. Uh, from here, you can see this n, the size n is usually always greater than 1. So this is always uh, less than sigma. So sigma x is always less than sigma. So it's less variable than the population uh, distribution. For normally distributed populations, uh, when a variable in the population is normally distributed, the sampling distribution for x bar, the mean of the sample, keep in mind we need to uh, understand this, the notation, uh, x bar means the mean of the sample. For all possible sample size, n is also uh, normally distributed. So here, this one, wider distri normal distribution is uh, uh, for the population. Uh, for this population, so that, uh, for example, the standard deviation is seven, sigma is seven. This is for the population. And for the sample, we, we assume the population satisfy normal distribution, the mean equals mu here in the center, and the standard division equals sigma, and sigma equals seven. And if we take sample of size 10, we take the mean of the samples, and those samples form a sampling distribution, and this sampling distribution will look like this. And the mean of the sampling distributions equals the population mean. So the both means will uh, at the same point. 
And the standard deviation of the sampling distributions will be equal to the population standard deviation divided by the sampling size n, which equals 10, right? sigma or 10. So if this one sigma equals 7, then this one equals square root of 10 equals 3.16, and this one will be equal to 2.21. Okay? So we can see the sampling distribution has a small variation, so it's narrow. So this standard deviation equals 2 point something. And the population standard deviation equals 7. So it's much wider, so 3 times uh, square, root of, square root of 10 equals 3.16. So it equals more than 3 times larger uh, than the sampling distribution spread. If the population satisfy A mu sigma, then the sample mean will satisfy a normal distribution also, and this mean equals this mean, right, because the mu x bar equals mu here, so these two mu's are the same. And this one standard deviation will equals this standard deviation divided by the square root of uh, A. Uh, hopefully, we understand the concept uh, up to this point. Then next, we are going to discuss an uh, example how to apply this uh, these two fact. The first one is the mean of the samples equals the population mean. The second is the standard deviation of the samples, of the sampling distribution will be equal to the population mean divided by the square root of n. Uh, hypoglemia is uh, diagnosed when blood potassium levels are below 3.5 milliwatt, I don't know that. I assume that we know a patient who's measured the potassium levels very daily according to a normal distribution, A, 3.8, 0 0.2. So the mean, this is uh, the mu of the population. This one is the standard deviation of the population. Uh, everybody, eh, the patient, the potassium level varies, but the mean of uh, equals 3.8, the standard deviation equals 0 0.2. Uh, if we take a measurement, if the level is less than 3.5, then we assume uh, he will be uh, diagnosed with the disease. So what is the probability that this patient will be misdiagnosed with uh, uh, this disease? So this is normal distribution, and uh, we should be very, feel very comfortable uh, how to find this probability. Right? Uh, first of all, we calculate the z-score, right? the formula z equals x minus nu over sigma. x here equals uh, 3.5 and mu equals uh, 3.8, and the standard deviation sigma equals 0 0.2. And if we plug in the numbers, we get z score equals negative 1.5. Uh, if we draw the picture, it looks like 1.5, uh, so like this. 1.5 is negative 1, negative 1.5 is something here. So we are looking for this probability. And we look up table A, and this probability equals uh, 7%. So if we only take uh, one measurement, even this patient is normal right, because uh, uh, the potassium levels will, will vary around this normal dist uh, follow, following the, satisfying this normal distribution. Right? So it's normal, but sometimes it will fall below 3.5. Even if it's normal, but it still has a probability, which is 7%, that it will fall below 3.5, which will be diagnosed with the disease. Actually, he has not. Uh, so this is the problem. Uh, so, so the probability is 7%. Now we have a better uh, method to do this. If we take the measurement, uh, we, we take a full measurement on different days, uh, then we take the mean of this full measurement. We use this mean as the x. Then what is the probability of a misdiagnosis? Uh, if you use the average of this full uh, measurement. Okay, now we are not talking about this uh, 
population distribution anymore. We are talking about uh, the sampling distribution. Right? So the sampling distribution, we still, still uh, we said the sampling distribution um, still satisfies normal distribution. Uh, now, what is the mean of the sampling distribution? The mean of the sampling distribution equals uh, the population distribution. So that's the mass still equals mu here. Now the difference is here. Uh, in the z score, z equals x bar. We use the mean, and right? sampling mean here, and minus mu, uh, that uh, minus mu x bar, which equals this, then divided by the sampling distribution standard deviation, which is a sigma over square root of n. Uh, so the difference this different and this is still the same. 3.5 is still used to uh, for diagnosis and uh, the normal distribution is uh, the mean of the sampling mean equals the population mean. So equals 0.8 here, it's still the same. But the, the uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution will be the population standard deviation divided by square root of the sampling size, which equals uh, 4. And we plug into these numbers, we get negative 3.0. So this one is negative 0.15, negative 0.3 will be somewhere here. And we check table E. Okay, that probability equals 0.1%. So we can see this uh, probability for misdiagnosis will be much, much, much smaller than if we use only one measurement. Uh, in this example, right, we need to keep in mind uh, what we are doing. So you need to be very clear which one we are uh, considering. In this one, we are talking about the population distribution. So the mu equals mu here, population mu, and sigma is the population uh, standard deviation. But in the second part, we are talking about uh, the sampling distribution of, for samples of size of 4. So this one still does not change, but this part will change. So keep in mind, this is the only difference for the sampling distribution with a population distribution. Next, we will discuss, uh, uh, we mentioned this, a central limit theory. Central limit theory is this, when randomly sampling from any population, uh, any population, normal or not, with a mean of mu and the standard deviation sigma, when a is large enough, the sampling distribution of uh, the sample means, x bar, is approximately normal, uh, or approximately normal. So, for, for uh, satisfy normal distribution, the mean of the sampling distribution equals the population mean, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution equals uh, the population standard deviation divided by square root of the sample size. Okay, suppose here, this is the population uh, distribution. We can see that uh, the strongly skewed distribution is not normal, uh, not normal at all. Now, for this one here, we choose a randomly size of two, yeah? n equals two. So you choose any two from the population, you calculate the mean of this, so you form uh, x1, yeah? and then you choose another sample size two, x2, and the next one here, a lot, you form a sampling distribution. Okay? That is the sampling distribution. Okay? Looks like a more normal than this, right? This one is uh, still not normal, but it's much better than that in the sense of uh, normal. Uh, if we choose a size of 10 right, from this population, we choose a, a sample of a size 10, right, and then we form uh, x1 bar, the mean of the first 10, and the mean of the second 10, x1 bar, x2 bar, x3 bar, and all this, we form a sampling distribution, and it looks like this. Right? It looks like this is more normal. 
are much normal than, than this. Now, if we do further and uh, we increase the sample size from 10 to 25, now we can see the sampling distribution is uh, almost no difference than a normal, and we cannot see any difference uh, with a naked eyes. So if the sampling size n equals 25, that is very good enough. Although the population is still from here. Uh, let me summarize. This population is normal distribution. It is strongly skewed. But I take a sample size of 25. Right? So the sample size, uh, random sample 1, and I calculate the mean of that sample. Then I choose another sample, the second sample, random sample, of the same size, 25, I calculate the mean, then I do the third one, and the fourth one, and so on, I form a sampling distribution. This gives us an almost approximate normal distribution. Next, we are going to discuss uh, linear combinations of uh, independent normal random variables. Uh, uh, we may already have uh, learned some concept this before, but uh, um, we are going to do some normal uh, further calculations. Any linear combinations, can, uh, any linear combination of independent normal random variables is also normally distributed. Mm -hmm. uh, we have example here. Assume x, capital X, satisfy n, 24, so normal distribution, the mean equals 20, the standard deviation equals 4. And the y satisfy this n, 18 and 8. So the mean equals 18, the standard deviation equals 8. Then, the difference x minus y is also normally distributed, because x minus y is a linear combination of uh, suppose x and y are independent. Right? So this x is the coefficient is uh, 1 times x plus negative 1 times y. So any ax plus by is called linear combination. Right? Here both a and b are uh, constant. In this example a equals uh, 1, b equals negative This one is normal, x is normal distribution, y is normal distribution, then x minus y is also a normal distribution. Then what is the mean of this new normal distribution? Okay, the mean of this x minus y, uh, we know this from uh, the previous chapters, equals mu x minus mu y, so equals uh, 20 minus 18, this one equals 20, this one equals uh, 18, so equals 2. So the mean of the difference x minus y is 2. The variance equals uh, the variance uh, st standard uh, deviation uh, squared equals sigma x squared plus, keep in mind this one is a plus, right? so this one is not minus, uh, plus sigma y squared, so equals uh, 4 squared uh, plus uh, so 4 equals 16, uh, 8 equals 64, and up together equals 80. Right? So that one equals 80. Uh, but we are looking for the standard division, so that's standard division x minus y equals uh, 80, then take the square root equals 8.94. So that's how we get this. Uh, so our conclusion is uh, the difference of these two independent normal random variables x minus y satisfies n to 8.94. The mean of the difference equals 2, the standard deviation of the difference equals 8.94. Right? So we should be able to determine all this up here. Now for the next one, that is the answer to a question. Right? The question is, suppose this one is a distribution, this one is a distribution. Let's put it is a, a, a more a real example. Suppose these are for some age, ages. This one is ages. So all this x is the average age equals 20, and the standard deviation equals 4. This one 
is a little bit younger, eh, younger than this group because the mean of the age equals 18 and the standard deviation equals 80. So this is more um, variable, but this one is, uh, is a little bit older. Uh, the average is older. Now the question is, if we randomly pick one person from this group from X and uh, randomly choose another person from this group, Although this group on average is older than this one, but uh, the one we picked randomly can still be younger than the one we randomly picked from here. Uh, there's a probability. Although on average this is older than this, but the one we picked can still be younger than this one. What we are looking for is what is the probability that uh, the random person from here is younger than the random person from here? Uh, that is the question. We are looking for, uh, okay, so here we are looking for this one is younger than this, so we use x minus y, and we know x minus y satisfies this normal distribution to 8.94. And we want to find out that the probability that a random person in here is younger than the random person in here, x less than y x less than y, that means x minus y is less than zero. Right, so now we, we are happy that we see x minus y, right, that is x minus y here. Right. This is x minus y. So we see, that's why we calculate the normal distribution for this difference. Right. So now the question is changed to, we are looking for the probability that x minus y uh, less than zero. What is x minus y? Okay, that says it's y normal to 8.94. So now let's go back to a, a very simple normal distribution calculation. Eh? Step one, we calculate this score. The z score equals uh, because we are looking for so less than zero, so x equals zero, so that, that, that one equals x. So this is x minus the mu of the distribution, right? The mu of the distribution equals two, so minus two, so that is mu, then divided by the sigma x here. And that one equals a negative uh, point two two. Then we check table A and we find the probability that equals forty one percent. Uh, that is this number is reasonable because on average this group is uh, older than this one, but the one, the random one from here, will have a less than fifty percent chances is uh, um, younger than this one. Okay, we have uh, further, some further properties. Uh, we discuss normal distribution, and we know normal distribution is very typical. That's why we pay a lot of uh, effort, um, attention on this. And uh, we also discuss the uh, sampling distribution. And uh, for sampling distribution, if your sample size is uh, large enough, no matter what the distribution is for your population, normal or not, the sampling distribution can be approximately uh, can be approximated by a normal distribution. Uh, so more generally, the central limit theorem is valid as long as we sampling many small random events. Right? This event, as we said, not necessarily normal, right? and even a many small random samples. Uh, uh, as long as no one random event dominates the others, we have many small random events, then the sampling distribution will be normal distribution. Uh, that explains why the normal distribution is so common. Uh, recall that the example, the woman's height example at the very beginning, we said uh, the height of a US woman's the average equals 64.5, the standard deviation equals uh, uh, sigma equals 
Okay. The mean equals 64.5 uh, inches, uh, and the standard deviation equals 2.4. Okay. So you may wonder at this time why it is a normal distribution. Okay, the height uh, depends on a lot of uh, factors, uh, genetic factors, environmental factors, like nutrition, so a lot of things. Each individual factor may not be a normal distribution. Uh, some may skewed, some may uh, even strongly uh, skewed. But because the height is uh, uh, a many small, the sum of many small random samples. So the height actually is a sampling distribution. Uh, central limit theory tells us that your height is a mean. Uh, because your height is a mean, so your height is a normal distribution. 